R.I.P. Gatewood. You were the only person speaking the truth in Kentucky. Now Kentucky ain't got nobody to go with. All these bureaucratic politicians who talk like you don't understand what the fuck they would be saying if they actually talked in real fucking language, thinking they're better than you, acting like they're in the ivory tower with their bureaucratic voice. They bullshitting you. They sound like they bullshitting you because they are bullshitting you. They ain't telling you the truth. They ain't never been telling you the truth. And in fact, when somebody does tell you the truth, they ostracize them. Look at your Dennis Kucinich. Look at your Ron Pauls. Look at Rand Paul. Rand Paul didn't tell you any of his thoughts, and you voted for him. You all want a bullshitter. You want a bullshitter. You don't want nobody that tells you the truth. You want a motherfucking bullshitter. Well, it's all you've ever voted for, and it's all you're going to get, and it's especially all you're going to get, not only because the system's corrupt and you're dumb, but also because Gatewood Gabbard is dead. So who do we got left in, in Kentucky? Who's going to tell us the truth? David Williams? Dad's going to tell us the truth? Good old Dave? Yeah, yeah, there's there's a source for, for lots of truth right there. Shaking my goddamn head. Um, as you know, I've appeared in front of this board before. I know that the publisher is, uh, is new to the game and has possibly never sat down at this table with me. Uh, but I would uh, tell the, our viewers, like I'm going to tell him, I brought along, our relationship has been contentious in the past. I've sat up here and solved all of Kentucky's problems. Nobody did anything about it, including the, uh, uh, endorsing my opposition. But that's okay. I understand. You know. I'm of the opinion that putting another pretty face at the front of a failing restaurant does not solve the problems in the kitchen. Somebody's got to go out there and clean out them grease traps. So, but, you know, that brought slings and arrows of outrageous fortune upon me politically. And, uh, you know, the, the editorial boards around the state, some of the papers decided, you know, this guy's a goofball, we're not going to fuck him, not going to cover him. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party were just like the old patent medicine drama that used to come around our country. He had two bottles of medicine. He'd play a banjo and he'd, he'd sell two bottles of medicine. One of those bottles of medicine was called high Laurel. And another one of those bottles of medicine was called low Papahara. Finally, somebody around that said, uh, is there any difference in these medicines? Oh, he said, considerable. They're both good, but they're different. He said, that high popolorum is made from the bark off the tree that we take from the top down. And that low popolorum is made from the bark that we take from the root up. <laughs> And the only difference that I have found between the Democratic leadership and the Republican leadership was that one of them was skinning from the ankle up and the other one from the ear down when I got to Congress. You know, but then, uh, you know, so uh, that's all right. I understand that. I understand people are tied into two political you parties. You speak as if you expect to win. How many times, you ran for agriculture commissioner in 83, how many times have you run? I ran for commissioner in 83, I ran the Democratic primary, I ran Democratic primaries in 91 and 95, decided that the party was freezing me out, running out of my ideas into the marketplace, and they weren't, they weren't inviting me anyplace. That's so why I was going to run as independent in 1999, I got the required signatures, the Reform Party approached me and asked me to run under their auspice, and I did. So, uh, a after working at it for 35 years, I can see the I can see the, the, the dam breaking down. I can see the levees being breached, and uh, I'm going to add as much weight as we can to, uh, to, to breach those levees even more. I, I, I feel a sea change going on in this country. The people are tired of being ruled by the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite son of a bitches. And uh, they're rising up uh, to throw those folks off. I'm going to be the most hated ex-governor ever if I make the proper decisions that it would be necessary to uh, continue to take its medicine and solve these perennial problems. But I won't have to leave a legacy for a party to have to live up to or fall down with. I'm totally independent. I really don't care. But what really has my dander up are the actions of Mr. Greg Stumbo, your attorney general, here in the past week. You know, he sued the gas companies. That's just a ruse to take the, head, the headlines. 
Well, part of our campaign has been we want to make the pharmaceutical companies come in here and put up $500 million in drug treatment programs with the state for the impact of their poisons are having on this state of Kentucky right now. It has paralyzed entire portions of eastern Kentucky. 64 OD deaths in Perry County last year alone. 64. If that was meningitis or a killer living in the woods, they'd shut the county down and call in the National Guard. We, the taxpayer, are the ones who are paying for the high cost of jail cells full, court dockets full, and if, even if it's in eastern Kentucky, it's taking away your health care dollar. Mr. Stumbo the other day took a $500,000 payoff to settle all the civil suits against Purdue Pharma who make OxyContin. $500,000. In that same settlement, Rhode Island got $2 million, West Virginia got $10 million. And the next day, the CEO of Purdue Pharma pled guilty to criminal charges on falsifying the drug's impact and paid $658 million in criminal fines. Mr. Stumbo should have demanded that that money be put into the state of Kentucky to take care of our drug treatment problem. He sold us out for pennies on the dollar. It was reprehensible what he did. We're not going to let that happen. Gatewood Galbraith, Mark Wireman, we need your vote. Thanks, Thanks very much. So I went to college, became an attorney, and decided I was going to go through all that work. I might as well become governor and lift Kentucky out of poverty. And I've gotten up every day for the last 40 years to try to figure out how to do that. Gatewood Galbraith, see, a perennial flower, when you plant it, it's supposed to come back the next year. Um, they're, they're a better flower because they would be there for several years, whereas a something that's not perennial, which I don't even know what it is, um, would just die in the wintertime. A perennial flower will continue to rebirth and regenerate every year. And so, why it's a bad term is because a perennial flower comes back every year. Gatewood Galbraith ran for governor, which is every four years, and it wasn't every year that he did it. In 2003, he didn't run. So, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like every time, you know, there was a governor's race, he was running. Um, so, regardless, I think the media is just trying to to smear his name on his deathbed, and which is such bullshit. The Courier Journal said perennial candidate dies, um, and I think that just defends their own arrogant, corporate, corrupt, uh, non-truthful agenda. So, other better words that could be used to describe Gatewood Galbraith: enduring, persistent, tenacious, people power, revolutionary. You know, I ran in '83 on the returning uh, campuses, cash crop in the state. Uh, you know, now six ex-governors agree with me. <laughs> we passed a cannabis bill 12 years ago. Six ex-governors supported it. It's now present-day science tells us we can get 20 barrels of petroleum off an acre of hemp. 20 barrels of premier petroleum off an acre of hemp. You know, our farmers should have a niche in that energy market. And when you talk about returning land as a means of producing wealth, then what you're talking about is spreading the wealth and giving everybody in every county an opportunity to get some of it. Oh, I understand that you're a widower, Fred. And, yes, uh, yes. Did you ever, uh, when you were married, did you ever think about uh, other women? Or did, oh, oh, yes, I did. Uh, did yes, I did. Did you ever sure. have a little fun with some oh, other women? Oh, I sure women? did. Sure oh, yeah? did. Why, yes, yes. Well, Everybody why don't you tell that. me about it a bit? Oh, well, I uh, had a lot of, lot of fun, you know. It, uh... And we're not all this confidential, you know. This is strictly, oh, I don't want anybody, nobody. This is off the record, Fred. Oh, I'm, yeah. I, I, I want to guarantee it. I want, you know, I don't want to get okay. watching like that Watergate and all that stuff they have down there. Don't worry, know. it's between the two of us. Okay, okay. Right. But, I got a few more questions I'd like to ask. Oh, oh yeah, okay. maybe so I can answer them. Yeah. Now you lived on the farm all your life. Yeah. Were you ever uh, cruel to animals? No, never cruel. To, I always good to them. There's always pets, you know. You never I'm, mistreated any cows? No, no, never, never mistreated any. I, I treat see. them just the same as I do the pretty girls, you know, what I meet and stuff, okay. you know, yeah. Okay, right. yeah, good. All right. Now, another question, Fred. Yeah, okay. Did you ever, when you were a kid, did you ever steal anything? No, we steal all anything. like to take Ooh. things. Huh? Yeah. Steal. Did you ever steal anything? Oh, my gosh, I must have, I think. I, everybody steals something, don't they? 2002, uh, spent uh, $20,000, got 27% of the 6th District Congress. James, you haven't won any of these races. What makes you think you're, that this time you're going to be you're going to be viewed as somebody who should be put in office? Well, there's some, Why 
would you assume that he'd be somebody anyway? Some motherfucking dickhead? What, you think Williams and Bashir is just a fucking shit? You think them two are the bomb? You think they're the only two in this whole fucking state that can run the state? Fuck you. When I say you all, it's not you. I'm talking about all the other people. No, you mean him. He's a dick. Listen to him. Fucking at least a straight guy that dies, got good life. He don't know what it's like to struggle. He don't even think. Aliens are what the struggle is. But that's why I brought these uh, these honors along as a peace symbol to see if we can't sit down and say, Fuck hey, Stephen folks, Ford. The courier jerk. Fuck way. Stephen Ford. Fuck the courier jerk. What did you steal? Where did I steal? Oh my gosh. Let's see. I think maybe I stole the candy by a damn store when I was a kid and my dad made me take it back. You made me take it back? Yeah, yeah. Sure, Fred. Uh, everyone steals uh, a little bit when they're a kid, oh, yeah. but uh, not everyone cheats on their income tax. Now, now, how did you do on your income tax? Oh, cheat? Why? Cheat on your income tax every year, you know. You put down stuff you bought, you didn't buy, and all that stuff, you know, to cover up. And, you know, they, they do that down in Washington, so we can do it here, see? I mean, oh, I see. All that. oh yeah, we, I always cheated. You know, it's, you have to really get a good living today, and I need that money more than they did down there, you know. These politicians get that money down, I know, you just throw it away, you know, all that stuff. You cheated because you were a farmer. And you oh, yeah, yeah, money. I cheated, yeah. yeah. I cheated on everything, I get a chance to, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, most people around here cheat when they get a chance? Uh, most of them do, yeah, most yeah. everybody. You know, that's worldwide, you know. Uh, yeah, I yeah, you know. I, I don't tell anybody, but I, I think a lot of people cheat. Oh, this is between you and me. Probably. Yeah, don't tell anybody. I think most everybody cheats, you know. I'm of the opinion that putting another pretty face at the front of a failing restaurant does not solve the problems in the kitchen. Somebody's got to go out there and clean out them grease traps. <laughs> Give them money. Give them what the media does. Fuck the media, you motherfuckers. Get your get fucking dollar in. You don't give a fuck about the actual and so public. This is what I stopped yeah, right. You just try to do a bunch of dick so jobs, a bunch of God questions. Oh, uh, an honest man. Which is rare in politics. Probably the only honest man in Kentucky. The gap between the rich and the poor is getting worse. Uh, Appalachia has at least a 30% unemployment. 5,000 signatures if you want to run as an independent. So, I guess in the Reform Party, 1999 and 2007, he had to get 5,000 signatures. When the Democrat and the Republicans only have to get maybe 10, maybe 2. Uh, I don't know. I had 2. Um, so, yeah. R.I.P. Gatewood. Damn, Kentucky going to miss you. I don't know who the fuck, there's nobody else out here, so who the fuck is going to tell us the goddamn truth? Mayor Fisher, David Williams, Brashear. I'd like somebody to tell the truth. Even Brashear's YouTube videos. Hey, Brashear, why don't you take the down the teleprompter and just talk? Uh, or just talk and then write that on the teleprompter. And when you look at the teleprompter, just talk as you're saying it. Just, just kind of relive the words. It would look more natural. Anyways. John Masters, Citizen Hill, Old Louisville, Fourth and Hill. I'm of the opinion that putting another pretty face at the front of a failing restaurant does not solve the problems in the kitchen. Somebody's got to go out there and clean out them grease traps. I'm of the opinion that putting another pretty face at the front of a failing restaurant does not solve the problems in the kitchen. Somebody's got to go out there and clean out them grease traps. I'm of the opinion that putting another pretty face at the front of a failing restaurant does not solve the problems in the kitchen. Somebody's got to go out there and clean out them grease traps. I'm a hick, I'm a mick, I'm a bitch, I'm a spick, I don't give a shit. I'm a total fucking dick, an alcoholic, a fucking lunatic with a nervous tick, doing some slapstick. I'm a gook and a jink, who's got some steep. I'm a heretic, who fucked up St. Nick. I don't fucking think, I'm a big fucking prick Like a cactus, and the Baptist Who slit in the wrist, cause they ain't allowed to kiss I'm a batter with no hits A fat Jew, Muslim, German, Catholic Who's pissed, I got a black power fist My fit and click is a shit, my lighter's a bit I'm a bitch with no tits I'm fake with tits made of plastic I'm as big as a toothpick I'm a dumb trick who's way too thick Who nitpicks, who's got a poison kiss I love potato chips, and Hollywood flicks and fuck your grits, gives me the shit. I got chap lips, I need some chap stick. I live in a pit, I'm gonna stab you with a nice pick. Like Professor Plum, I killed you with a candlestick. I'm a bitch, broke off to the side in the ditch. In a tent, during lit, in gent, a town of hicks with too many dicks. I'm a 
prostitute flipping tricks. I'm a nigga who's getting licks. This weary body is spent. I'm a slick 